Hello world, this is DJ Craven, and you're listening to the Craven Happiness Podcast. This is episode number seven. Thanks for joining us. We're trying to turn up the volume on happiness. Got uh, pretty excited about the guests here today. So Sarah, without further ado, let's jump into it. Introduce yourself a little bit. Hello, my name is Sarah Chap, aka Cupcake Sarah in Meadville, Pennsylvania. Yes. Yep. That's me. <laughs> so, so Cupcake Sarah, so um, you will tell us where we are. Explain a little bit where okay, we are currently. So currently we are at 896 Market Street in uh, Meadville, Pennsylvania, 16335. Uh, right in the heart of downtown Meadville. Great, happening, energetic place uh, these days. Yeah. Um, yeah, we are across from the whole darn thing. We are the striped awning with the blue and pink Adirondack chairs. Yes. And the official name is? Confections of a Cake Lover. Yes, very nice, which we'll get into, I want to, for sure, on the yeah. title. Absolutely. Yeah, sure, sure. So um, typically what I like to do is just kind of do a little intro, a little background, a little mm-hmm. context for the audience. Um, so where is Sarah from? Sarah is from. <laughs> with <laughs> an H? With an H, can't forget the H. Um, I am originally from upstate New York, southern Adirondack, mm-hmm. Saratoga yeah. region. Okay. Yeah. All right. And grew up there. Um, grew up all there. All through high school up there. All through high school. Um, ended up going to St. Lawrence University, which is way up there near the Canadian border, another 30 minutes north, and we would get a Canadian cell phone reception. Oh, nice. So that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I went there four years, and I actually got my bachelor's in biology. Biology? Okay. And education. And education. And education. Okay. Yes. So let's skip kind of somewhat right to it. Um, sure. Obviously, cooking and baking, mm-hmm. or whatever the proper term yeah. is, so yell at me if I'm using the wrong no, terms, because okay. I don't know anything about any of that, <laughs> um, is, uh, is, is involved in your life from kind of what age? How, how early on? Oh, I can't even remember. Um, my grandmother and my mother always baked from scratch and that's actually what we do here we do not use baked um we do not use boxed or canned items okay um we i will say we are now doing cake pops and unfortunately my batter does not make the proper cake pops so we do use box mix for cake pops um but other than that all of our cupcakes and cookies are made from scratch way back um i actually am in current possession of the piping tips and kit that my grandmother gave me she passed on to me um so they're ancient um yeah so probably i mean my gosh like six seven years old i can remember being in my grandmother's kitchen baking um and we just we always believed in that yeah yeah no that's cool so you you took to it obviously at a young age and ever since basically been baking cooking i mean yeah i mean you, you can only do so much when you're, I mean, in high school, I was more sports oriented. Okay. Um, didn't really bake or anything like that. Um, but uh, what brought me to this, um, when I was married in 2007, we were we had to use a particular baker because it was a part of the contract with the venue. Okay. And the cake stunk. <laughs> <laughs> and okay. I was like, um, I can do a lot better than that. No kidding. No kidding. So that was kind of that was the, that was the turning point. That was the turn. And then about that time was when Ace of Cakes and Cake Boss came out. Okay, on TV those on shows. TV. Okay, Cake yes. Boss I've heard of, not the other one, but okay. Yeah. And those are- Ace of Cakes. That's Jeff Goldman. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Gotcha. So, um, but I had always been the one thing, and that's a big thing at this bakery. Is I'm thinking of all my girls that work for me. Only one out of the seven have actually gone to culinary school. Okay. And that one cannot frost a cupcake to save their life. <laughs> swear to God. Um, most of the people I actually hire here are artists. Oh, okay. So what we do is right. with our hands, and it is art, and it's sculpture, and it's painting, and it's right. um, that visual appreciation. Um, so I was always amazingly good at sculpture in high school. I was in advanced sculpture classes. Oh, nice. So that's, and I've always crafted um, beading, mosaics, you name it, scrapbooking, huge in scrapbooking, you name it, I did it. Yeah. Um, and just all of that fine art 
manual manipulation, I was able to transfer over into Kate. Yeah, and that makes total sense to be able to bring those two together. Yes. Those kind of two worlds, of course, and again, in cakes, they make perfect sense. Right. Maybe not as much making mac and cheese, but sure. certainly <laughs> much more with the, um, you know, with, with the cakes. Absolutely, yeah. I yeah. understand that. So that, that makes total sense. And, um, and I was going to ask you about that, about the caking of, or, you know, you know, cake making and all sure. of that of kind of what is it about it that kind of that you love so much about it? You know, is it is it maybe that creative side of it? Is it, you know, making it for other people? Sure. Is it because we like the taste of it? Is sure, it, you know, like sure. there's got to be something really maybe more. And have you even thought about it that way of really um, what yeah. about it? Yeah, so absolutely. I mean, the first thing is you come in, if you come in, um, we have different things a lot of the times. Um, every project that we get is new. A lot of times people will come in and they'll be like, well, where's your book? I'm like, we don't do a book. You show us what you want and we'll do it. Okay. Um, Much so more custom. Very, and we are a very custom baker. Okay. Um, I can only think of a handful of cakes in which we've actually done multiple of that design. Okay. Um, for customers, typically speaking, everyone comes in and they want something completely off the wall and, right. and custom. So having that ability um, to make those visions come alive are what makes it fun. Yeah. For, for example, last week we did a cake that looked like a ball of yarn, like a yarn cake, like actually looked like a yarn. Yeah. Uh, last year, one of my best cakes was in the shape of um, Evander Holyfield's ear completely bit off. <laughs> no like, I am not lying because um, the girl shared a birthday with Mike Tyson. Wow. <laughs> And it's a girl, it's a girl. And that was just last year? Yeah, it was like last year. So like, how many yeah, years yeah. later? It's not like that's a relevant thing yeah, that's happened. Right, yeah. That's a, yeah, that, that's I don't even cool. know if that girl was even alive, but yeah, she, she knows. So, so we can do, we do a lot, do a lot of, of things. Yeah, I, and that's got to make me, my immediate question is that, so what is the most off the wall type of cake that you've done? Sure, sure. Or, is, or is that it? I mean, that um, I mean that's, that's one of them. We have, um, if anyone is familiar with the Canadian show Trailer Park Boys, we actually did a cake for them okay. several years ago. Um, we did a Breaking 60 cake, which actually looked like the Breaking Bad van. Ah, uh, okay. With all of the yeah. um, implements and drugs right, yeah. from the, Reprenalia. yeah, <laughs> all the blue, yeah, the blue drugs. We did that. Um, we've done an actual, like, we did one where it looked like a hellbender coming out of the water, so it was all slimy. Wow. We've done that That's for really cool. somebody. And then this has all been here mm -hmm. in Meadville. Yeah. Oh, we also did a bust of um, Larry Bird. Oh, no kidding. No kidding. Wow. Yeah. Oh, this is very cool. Yeah. <laughs> How far out do you go then, as far as like sending your so I say sending your cakes or your sure. artwork? How, how far of an area do you, I'll say maybe traditionally cover, and then maybe the oddballs of how far you've gone? Um, most of my clientele, besides the immediate area, I do get a fair amount of Erie. I actually get a fair amount of Cleveland. Okay. Which is interesting. I myself, I mean, we do weddings. Mm -hmm. um, I will drive. The longest I've driven has been. 30 minutes short of Cleveland, okay. but again, they pay they pay for the delivery, so right. I did have that. Um, most of, if I do weddings, but most of them are in Erie, around here. There's not a lot of um, weddings that we've done, like Franklin, like down that way, mm -hmm. um, but people come to us, so yeah. Um, yeah, so I would say that's that's our general. Yeah, and when you say people come to us, I was going to ask that too, yeah. of like, what, is it a lot of word of mouth? Do you do a lot of marketing? Have you found yourself being in that? marketing questioning of how much I'm going to go into sure, that. Sure, sure. Um, I have found most of it is word of mouth. Um, I will confidently say at this point, I probably spend now straight marketing, I mean, not advertising in the sense of stuff that's right outside. We do some boards and we'll do some signs and things like that, but actual marketing, I probably spend less than $100. Oh, no kidding. no kidding. So you are pure, pure of mouth. I'm yes. pure of mouth yes. social media. And now the thing is, and it's it's unfortunate um, for print media, radio, things like that. When you, in the age of Facebook and the age of Instagram, when you spend ten dollars on an ad and all of a sudden it's like seen by 10, 12,000 people, you can't compete yeah. with that. Compete with it's, Absolutely. It's, yeah. So we get a lot of. We get a lot on social media. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And that would be, then that's just where the attention is. Sure. Right. So right. That just and our clientele. Yeah. Yeah. That's our clientele. 
No, that's um, that's very cool. One thing that you mentioned that just because I'm a sports guy, we got sure. we got to go back. Sure, to, sure. So you said you did a lot of sports yeah. in growing up when yes. you were younger, in high school. Which ones? And... Field hockey. Okay. I was a field hockey goalkeeper. Nice. Uh, all state. Um, like number one state for high school. That's awesome. Killed New York it. State. Obviously. New York State. Um, and then I played D three in college at St. Lawrence. At St. Lawrence. That's very cool. So hockey, again, this is where I go really yeah, deep. So yeah. people take a pause if you want to. But I gotta know <laughs> field hockey. I've seen it, but not real familiar. Because obviously, as you know, we don't have it around no, you here. Don't. Um, you do now. Allegheny has a team. Do we? You do. That's very Allegheny cool. Just I'm gonna have to go first check team. that out. Yeah. Um, Goalkeepers wear what specifically? Uh, Which is very funny now that I just realized that your right. husband's a goalkeeper. Yes, so, but yes. Keep going. Um, styrofoam padding. Yeah, it's and, it's, and so you've got the pads below, and then you've yeah. got upper pads yeah. similar to maybe hockey goalie. Um, yeah, goalie. we uh, yeah we have a chest protector, we have a neck guard, helmet. Um, the gloves are a little bit different, but but it is very similar to yeah. hockey. Um, and the pads are just smaller and allow us to move quicker because right. you are covering an area. Um, so people around here are probably familiar with lacrosse. If you think of a lacrosse net, maybe double in width. Width, right. Maybe double in width or almost two and a half times as wide. Right. That's the size of the right. net you're yeah. defending. Oh, that's very cool. Yeah. <laughs> that's so awesome. That, yeah. Again, we'll sidetrack off of that because sure, you could sure. be in a rat hole there yeah, all day right. <laughs> um, Just because of how interested I am in that. But no, that's very cool. So. As it relates to some of the things that, you know, happiness and kind of sure. about why we're here um, and why I'm trying to do all this is how did you, how did you know outside of you having a bad cake at your wedding sure. and saying, I can do a much better job sure. of this, I'm just going to take it on myself. Um, where do you, where does happiness rely or lie in, into you being uh, a cake maker and mm -hmm. doing everything you do? I don't want to minimize you just sure. maker, but basically a business owner and all of those things. Mm -hmm. Where does happiness rank in there? And, and I could maybe be more specific, but that's kind of a general question to start. Sure. So um, I'm going to take us back maybe about 10 years. Um, besides the whole I could do better with the cake, I was actually a school teacher. I was a middle school math and science teacher for five years okay. um, in New York and in New Hampshire where my husband was finishing up at Dartmouth. Okay. Um, I loved some aspects of the job, and some were very eye-opening. Um, it was during a time where we were in the recession, mm -hmm. and um, for some reason, teachers were attacked. It's almost like teachers with their $30,000 a year jobs <laughs> ruining it for everybody, and it was like, are you kidding? <laughs> so we became the enemy. But um, with us bouncing around again, I actually knew that we were going to be in back in New York for only two years and I didn't want to try to find another job. Yeah. So I stayed home and had my daughter mm -hmm. and that was great. I was an at home mom for two years. Um, then when we moved here, I also am almost a doctorate in education. Oh wow. I am an ABD in curriculum and instruction. Um, so here I am two years out of teaching. And I have all this education under me. Right. Uh, do you think I could find a job? No way. <laughs> and they unfortunately need though they were closing schools. They right. Were consolidating. Yeah. Um, understandably, I get it. Um, so when you are in a position where you are a servant to the public, and I mean essentially I was, I was a public school teacher. Mm -hmm. um, my salary, my life was dependent on people who, I mean, the, the voters. Right. For the budgets. Yeah. Um, nobody who's ever set foot in the school doesn't know what I'm actually doing to make the community better, to make children's lives better, to make to make the next doctors and lawyers of the of the world. Right. Absolutely. Um, and people are just looking at their bottom line. Yeah. So that that's stressful. That to me is not that's not creating happiness, and I didn't want to be a part of that. So it, it led me to well, I I'm gonna just try to. I, I try to work in places where I could um, just keep up with my baking. I tried the concept of a home bakery, see if I could get into it. Um, unfortunately, we were renting at the time, wasn't able to do it, and it just led me to here. Yeah. And um, of course, I mean, have I had my ups and downs? Absolutely. Right. Um, I would say about two years ago is when things really started to click. But ultimately, no matter what, in the set, we have been open for seven years. 
in the seven years of it, the big thing is, is I, I, I am in charge of my destiny. I am in charge of how well my business is going to do. If yeah. it fails, it's nobody's fault but my own. Right. If it succeeds, yeah, it's because I busted my butt and I have my I have the best employees you would ever meet. Um, they have helped me from day one. It's just I have people that still work with me that I've had for years, um, and our that is my happiness is because of them. Yeah. Um, and they they are happy when they're here because we're all creating memorable pieces. We, when people come in and they order from us, they are inviting us into their celebrations. They're yeah. inviting us into their happiness. Right. We've even done a divorce cake. That woman was so happy. <laughs> <laughs> she was so happy to be finally divorced, but she invited us into it. That's too so, funny. Yeah. That's awesome. So yeah. I, want, I want to touch on the one thing you mentioned there about kind of that it was, you're kind of in charge and yeah. it's, it's your decision. Sure. And I feel somewhat of the same way mm -hmm. when, regardless if you're even the owner or you're the boss or whatever it is, whatever the decisions that you're making, whatever you are, if you can get to a place where you can understand that everything is your fault and you're in control of your life, yes, even almost somewhat regardless of whether you're the boss or the owner mm -hmm. or the whatever, mm -hmm. if you are in control of your life and you're in control of your decisions, yes, nobody else is in control of your decisions, right. you can get to a happy place Absolutely. much faster. Right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And if there is something that isn't your fault, is beyond your control, letting it go yeah. is huge. Right. Oh man, it is it is the sweetest feeling when you have let something go and let other things just play out by themselves. Yeah. And you're just, I putting, I always, literally when there are outside factors that are bringing me down or want to bring me down or want I just I literally put my blinders up yeah that's and the way to put it boom yeah and you it's go for it because what if it's something that you can't control right what are you gonna do about it anyway right right you could sit and cry and scream exactly. and, but nobody's gonna listen because right. it's out of your control so you, you have literally have no control of it sure. so what's what's the point of, of dwelling on it sure so, now that's a great way to look mm -hmm. at it um, I really think that I just there's a lot of goodness there. Yeah. Um, there really is. Um, so from the from the perspective of kind of getting started up, yeah. Talk me a little bit through on how sure. that process was because again you obviously had a vision maybe not exactly like this but somewhat of like that. As sure. you say, you opened seven years um, mm -hmm. you know ago, two years ago, it really started clicking. Sure. So there's a that's a five year span of non clicking so to speak. Yeah. But five years opposed to X number of years in all totality potentially at this place mm -hmm. could be such a small number is, right yeah. and then the word patience comes up it is in, in my mind in there. So sure. talk to me a little bit about that of not necessarily if it has to be five years but just the the starting up of you had to have gotten some nose and some turbulence along the way I mean there had to be some bumps in the road at sure. least somewhere absolutely um, so I mean getting started um, I mean I I did start my business in the height of the recession. Um, I am very fortunate, and I've always been very fortunate, that I found the right people who still to this day I go to for advice and I still respect highly. Um, and I think in the entire journey of that seven years is holding on to those people. Right. Um, my, uh, the, the couple who helped me get the business loan, my family, my friends, I've met some phenomenal people along the way. Um, just focusing on those individuals yeah. is crucial. And with anybody who's going to open a small business, um, and I, I can speak on behalf of, I am the treasurer of our business alliance, so I know many of my uh, downtown friends, and a lot of them are, they have this, in order for them to succeed, in order for them to get through those bumps and those is you have to have a strong support network. Absolutely. And it's not financial. Right. Okay. So <laughs> that's, and that's the big thing Important. too, is, um, it's not a matter of finding someone who, Oh geez, I'm a little short. Maybe I can find some of the pump. More. It's right. not that it's somebody who, um, can help you get, help you with marketing ideas, help you with, um, creative ways, creative new ways to market yourself, creative new items to put in your shop, creative new things to make. It's a matter of 
the people who are positive and confident and happy, yes, yeah. they, they, they are happy to help. Um, those types of individuals are what makes the ride significantly smoother. Right. Yeah. And I, I would agree with that because I've always thought about it in the same way of the people that you surround yourself yes. is kind of where you're going to go. So right. if you're surrounding yourself with positive people, mm -hmm. that's, it's just the nature of how that works. Absolutely. The toughest part about all of that is that sometimes the negative people in your life are sometimes the closest ones or mm -hmm. are close to you. Mm -hmm. And to be able to block them down or, or tone them down or not have them in your life anymore sometimes can be very difficult. Well, for me, I've always been one that I, I even asked myself this the other day. I'm like, do I thrive off of the people who support me or do I thrive off of those people who don't want to see me succeed? Right. And I, I love just being like, look at me now. Yeah. <laughs> you're saying you like the underdog. Is that what you're saying? Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, and I also, yeah, the people who want to bring you down, want to see you fall on your face. It, that's a motivator. That's Absolutely. always from from a again. Let's go back to high school sports. Let's yeah. go back to um, high school academics. Let's go back to that. People, you know. Oh gosh, she she let in like five goals last night. She's she's. Dead. Hold on a second. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's you know. I I I personally thrive off. Of yeah, that. absolutely. I do. You yeah. can also paraphrase that as a chip on your shoulder. Absolutely. Right. Oh, I carry it. Yeah. Well, and but I carry it good. <laughs> yeah, I would say there's, all, there's, there's obviously degrees of everything. Sure, right? sure, sure. Um, but I think the chip on your shoulder is a very is a very very powerful tool. It is, um, and it's a good motivator towards you towards that happiness. Absolutely. As long as you don't make that the focus. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, that's As, pretty cool. Yeah, for sure. That's cool. How do you, um, I want to mention, you mentioned you have some employees here. How, how many people do you guys have here, roughly? Okay, so I'm going to put in quotes seven. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's, so. I don't need to. Yeah, seven-ish. I've got four high school girls. I've got two where if I'm doing a big, big cake, I pay them the big bucks and have them come in and do it. I do have one who just started. She's amazing. Um, she works a couple days a week. And then I have another in a pinch I can bring her in. But yeah, it's it, it's all these very, very artistic, very, just, they're fantastic. I just can't sing praises enough. Of yeah, them. that's Wonderful awesome. Girls. Yeah. And when I think about employees, you know, kind of from people that are, you know, quote unquote, working under you, working mm -hmm. for you, but, you know, from the owners that are good from the top, it's more of a working with you. I was just going to say, they, don't, situation. they don't work for me. Because they, they work, work right, me. they work with you. Yeah. And, there's a mentality that I've heard that it's, you know, when you kind of quote unquote graduate yourself to a manager or get yourself into an ownership position or that you're quote unquote the boss, it's now, okay, now these people don't work for me. Now I've got seven people that, that I work for. Right. Right. And right. flipping the script a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Because in a way you're now you're providing for them. I mean, sure. Maybe not somebody necessarily in high school, but I mean, you still could look at it that way. Absolutely. They're expecting, you know, the monetary value so that they can go and do whatever they want yeah. with it. Um, you, you're you're kind of working for them mm -hmm. to be able to get the next you know to the next step for whatever whatever their desire. Is. Absolutely. Oh, I mean, all of them have uh, input in all of the creative items that we do here. They have an input on the menu. If they come to me and say, "Hey, what about this flavor?" Absolutely, let's try it. Um, they're always sending me ideas. I think we should do this. Um, it, I mean, my goodness, I, I absolutely value their opinion. And that's something that a lot of them who have worked in other positions find interesting. They're like, gee, Sarah, that's just really weird how you listen to us. I'm like, well, why wouldn't I? Because, and I'll tell you this, so I worked for a superintendent who he said, the smartest thing you could ever do as a manager is hire people who are smarter than you. Absolutely. Because it actually makes you you look good. Absolutely. You know, that's what it is. Don't hire dummies. Yeah. Because they're going to bring, like, bring, hire people who are actually really, really smart. Absolutely. If they're smarter than you, so what? Yeah. And then you get the, then you get the value of actually learning something from them. Sure. Right? Absolutely. I had, um, before the job that I'm in currently, mm -hmm. the president of our company, um, it was up out of Erie, and it was the same, basically the same thing. He had mentioned that a couple times in the past, it wasn't like this big announcement or anything, but he basically said, I want to hire, I want everybody in this building to be smarter than me. He's yeah. the president of the company. Yeah. Right? Now, granted, he was a really sharp dude. Okay. So that was going to be really hard to do. Um, but his point was the same thing, right? Sure. It's the same thing of trying to surround yourself with it's this smart people, positive yeah. people, happy people, all of those things. Yeah. And it, why not do that in the workplace, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. 
Another thing that um, I wanted to ask you specifically about, because you're such a you're such a niche um, thing here with you cake making and mm -hmm. all of those things, that yeah. I've talked about it before about like this holy grail. And what I mean by that is of something that you're good at, mm -hmm. but then also something that you love, and being okay. able to do both of those mm -hmm. at the same time, sure, can be somewhat of of like a holy grail. Sure. Do you think about that at all? Have you ever thought about that? Of like, okay, I love to bake, I love the artists, I love the creativity that we've talked about all so far. Okay. And then you also get to the point of like, people are actually paying me to do this. <laughs> right? Yeah, like, I mean, it's, it's yeah. kind of crazy to think about it a sure, little bit that way, sure. right? Yeah, there, there are some people who, and I mean, certainly we, we do everything to fit within a budget. If someone says, I have this crazy big idea, but I only have this budget, we absolutely work with them. Right. But it is surprising. It's the biggest thing that people will just shell out money for is first birthdays. <laughs> first birthdays. <laughs> and, that, and you know what? They end up being, I, I, will, I will put money on it right now, our best work because they're really cute yeah. and I work well with the really cute. Yeah. <laughs> I love it when it's super cute yeah. see, and super whimsical, right. um, but that's our best work. But yeah, some people will just, oh yeah, no, I'm just, yeah, and, hey, that's cool. Yeah, and then, yeah, we, we absolutely meet their expectations and that's what makes it. Yeah. Oh, no, that's cool. Yeah, but yeah, for the most part, yeah, a lot of people think that we're like really expensive. Well, we can be really expensive. Right. I have a lot of people that'll call and say, I need a price on a wedding cake. Well, we've done weddings yeah. that are hundred bucks and two thousand. Right. What do you want? Yeah. <laughs> right. You yeah. want a sheet cake or do you want something? Right. Yeah. Right. So gotcha. yeah, we've we can. There's a lot of things we can do. Yeah, and you got to ask, right? I mean, that's almost goes to like right. the thing. You have to anyways, ask. Just it's anything. I'm just. Yeah. I mean, I don't know you. I literally just met you right now. Right. right? <laughs> I mean, that's, that's the case. Granted, we know people in the community and yeah. um, similar connections there, but you have to ask, and it's similar to the same and thing. You, just right, ask. and you have to ask, and um, and yeah, no assumptions. Um, yeah, for somebody who may spend three hundred dollars on one cake, I have I've done John Deere cakes that are three hundred dollars, and if they think, oh my gosh, I'll look for John, no, I've done John Deere's that are like thirty. Right. It's just what do you what do you want? Right. Yeah. It's yeah. Time to put into it. That's yeah. What's so and that's and that's what makes us you know unique is we we cater to all walks of life all wallets all like because bottom line is is we want to be a part of your celebration we want right. to be a part of that happiness that happy moment yeah yeah no that's pretty cool yeah. that's really cool mm -hmm. one thing that i like to talk about is judgment okay and i would imagine you maybe don't get a lot of negative you know, reviews or negative connotations sure. or anything along those lines, but um, speak to me on, and you don't have to go into specifics, okay. but just generalities of what do you think about that from a standpoint of somebody wanting, we talked about earlier, wanting to tear you down or yeah. not wanting to see you sure. well, maybe in addition to the chip on the shoulder, so to sure. speak, and kind of turning it around, mm -hmm. what, speak to me maybe a little bit about judgment from others and how that, sure. how you, how you kind of handle that. Well, um, yeah, so from a customer standpoint, um, knock on wood, we do pretty good. Yeah. Um, once in a blue moon, something will happen, and we are absolutely glad. Like full refund. What can we do to make it better? You know, we we certainly work. Um, yeah. The, but one thing, and I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna preach to everyone right now. Because <laughs> I'm gonna gonna do it on behalf of all of my restaurant tour friends. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Yelp is terrible. <laughs> okay. And I'm gonna tell you why. I had someone go on a couple of years ago and put up a ridiculous Yelp review. Okay. Like, what is this? False. Um, I, I don't want to say it's false. I don't want to say the person was false. I'm just like, kind of like a shrugging, like where the where the hell is this coming from, <laughs> like gotcha. sort of thing. Yeah. And I responded. Right. Because my thing is, I'm going to respond, <laughs> and I never do it where I come out like I. My mother is. Very, she has taught me how to make the other person feel like they are two inches tall. <laughs> just not from like yelling. It's just like, wait a second. I thought it was this way, and this is. And I, we keep extensive paperwork. We photo document everything. Um, there's even been times where we photo document as we're working on stuff. Right. Um, but anyways, this person wrote a negative review, and I responded. Quite a lengthy thing. Okay. A couple weeks later, and my mother's the only one who will actually go on. I do not look at it. I will not go on Yelp. I will not go on Google. I will not look at it because I don't. I don't want to. I don't want right. to see it. Yeah. Um. But it was gone. My mom's like, your your response is gone. 
maybe a week later, Yelp calls me and says, hey, we see you have a negative review. For $30 a month, we can manage your negative reviews and respond appropriately. And I was like, are you kidding me? And right. I hung up. So, people, please know, <laughs> Yelp reviews. A restaurant may look good because they are paying them to look good. Right. Really good restaurants know it's a bunch of BS, so they don't want to feed into it. So don't look at Yelp reviews. <laughs> that's, your, that's your spin off. That is my big spin. Yeah. Um, you know, for us, it is word of mouth. Um, and yeah, we're, we're doing okay. We're doing yeah. pretty good right now. And with word of mouth, if it's all word of mouth, somebody's not gonna, I mean, it's not gonna somewhat negatively affect you if you're continuing to do the business, right? So also your yeah. word of mouth has been good enough that you yeah. haven't had much to worry yeah, about. Yeah, I, I haven't. Um, I mean, we've, it's the, what, third weekend in January, and we've booked, then we've booked literally every weekend, so like, what is right. this? And this is usually our slow time. Yeah. Um, so yeah, our, I mean, of course, absolutely, there are gonna be people we don't please, and that's yeah. fine. And there are gonna be people who, they don't like our buttercream because it's too sweet, or they don't like uh, X Y Z because it's it, it's it's gonna happen, and that's fine. Um, there's enough business to go around. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. we've cre- in the seven years we've created a very 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 strong clientele. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it's so what I think of all of that is that like what you were just saying about like somebody thinks your buttercream is too sweet. Sure. Uh, well, that's okay, right? Because again, yeah. it's, it's almost somewhat of the same thing we talked about earlier. But that's out of your control. Like if right. if I don't right. like the taste of that buttercream, right. well, you can't control that. Right. That's just what the market is saying, yes. or that's what the customer says. Yes. So okay, well, my mom appreciate still it. she still doesn't like something. Still, it's like you know those chocolate chip cookies, and I'm like you know <laughs> <laughs> this is my recipe. This is my, I really can. she uses the stuff. For you, um, that I have on the top of my head, is and I like to ask a lot of them. I haven't got everyone, but I think I'm sure. gonna start doing it. Is that what is success to you, Sarah? That that just like I mean beyond the I think success is being able to take a key and turn a door every day knowing that what's beyond that door is yours. Whether it's success at home, you bought a brand new car that you love and that's your car. For me, it's turning the door and knowing everything in here, bought, paid for, that's, that is my success. This, this yeah. is mine. It's awesome. This is, this is cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's success. Good. No, that's good. <laughs> I, different answers, everybody's sure, different. Sure. I will tell you that everybody has had the same boss. Sure. Everybody, because again, you've been answering questions pretty quickly. Yeah. Most people do answer things pretty quickly. It's, mm-hmm. it's very, it's a, that's a very common, uh, common pause yeah. for that question. Because it's a loaded question. It is. It really is. It is. Um, it really is. And, and for me, um, I think you basically somewhat said it. For me, success is happiness. Mm-hmm. And I think it's that same thing of making sure that you're happy and um, happy every day, you know, smile every day, yeah. be able to be a positive light. Yeah. Just to be able to, because the negative things, you just only can control so much, right? Exactly. Well, um, what is, just kind of looking forward, um, as we come to the end here of this podcast, what do you think is kind of what's the next thing for, you know, everything here in this building and for you and for your business and everything else? What's the next thing? I mean, obviously you're going to continue to make cakes. Is there any, not the any big reveals sure, sure, uh, sure. by any means, but I mean, what's the what's the next step? Any big uh, hopes well, and dreams and well, things you're striving for? once we get through Valentine's Day. <laughs> I would imagine Valentine's Day is a big deal. Uh, it is my Super Bowl. Yeah. It is our Super Bowl. Uh, it's disgustingly, ridiculously busy. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we have actually, in the last year, have been presented with um, a multitude of different ways in which we can take the business. Okay. Um, talking about expansion, talking about food truck, talking about um, second location, and talking about 
I mean, you name it, it's all been presented to us. And yeah. it's just a matter of um, last year was our big year that we've had. And, and I'll be honest with you, just with the, the way that, I mean, business has always been really good, but last year was like, going on this yeah. is like this is weird something different yeah. sure it's like something something's going on yeah. um and i mean we're even seeing that trend continuing and, right. and i thought okay let me just pause for a second in 2020 and just see if this trend is continuing but it is so it's just one of those of being able to take the next big jump yeah but the bottom line is, is there's only one of me right I mean, there's many days where if I have to go run to the bank, next thing I do, I come back and there's already five messages for me. So it's yeah. really hard, I, I, you know, like, how were we going to expand ourselves? So we actually, um, we have uh, outsourced, we're now at Hold Our Bank. We're also at Julian's, we're at Hank's. Um, so we have three major contracts. And, and just seeing is that there's, there have been rumblings of other potential contracts. Oh, okay. Um, so that would be really really good yeah so awesome. I, you know i don't know um right now i'm just kind of going with it right um enjoying that things are not tight yeah i like that yeah certainly <laughs> that would be nice yes it's <laughs> nice to be able to you know have a little mad money and be able to afford another employee and right. be able to afford like that's that's always been my thing too is because i I'm not, i absolutely would love to have another Around. Yeah, and reinvest in your business, right? And that's what it is. Yeah, this and constantly. I mean, we're looking at bigger machinery in here. Like we're do, we're doing a lot. Absolutely. So. And I would imagine some of that stuff's got to be pretty expensive. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my girl just yesterday broke my mixer. Uh. <laughs> a third time it's been broken. Why? Because we are working with too much now. Again, it's yeah. the mixers are like. <laughs> <laughs> Overuse, right? Yeah. yeah. So, which is not a bad problem to have yes, sometimes, yeah, right? Yeah. So definitely reinvesting in the business, whether it's manpower or equipment. Yeah, absolutely. That is an absolute, and then we'll see what else. Well, this has been great. This is awesome. Um, anything that you want to add at all that we haven't touched on that you might have thought we wanted to touch on, business-wise, happiness-wise, anything? Um, if anybody out there is ever interested in opening a business in downtown Meeple, um, absolutely come chat with me. Come chat. There's a lot of us that would be more than happy. Even if it isn't in downtown Meeple, if it's in the area, we would love to sit and chat. Um, being, and we have a lot of resources for people who are interested in pursuing their dreams and yes. pursuing their happiness. Yes. Um, so yeah, please come and talk to us. Yeah. Myself and there's a lot of us down here. Right. You could shoot ideas off of. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. No, that's yeah. that's great. Um, again, I appreciate you saying yeah. yes because um, <laughs> I'm surprised why everybody has said yes so far. I haven't had somebody to say what? no. I don't know. I just, I don't know. I, I didn't think anybody would want to talk to me. Right. It's been pretty crazy and a um, pretty initial ride here. But um, So again, I appreciate it. Yep. And everybody out there, thanks for listening. And we'll see you on the other side. Thank you. That was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> These are so much fun. Yeah.